Hello, beautiful people. You're listening to the English Made Simple Show. This is episode number 96, numero 96. Bienvenidos y bienvenidas. My name is Milena from EnglishMadeSimple.net. And uh, welcome to another episode of the English Made Simple Show where we try to decipher this crazy world of English language. Oh my goodness. And once we learn English, we can then start learning Dutch because that's where the English language uh, originated from. It stemmed from Germany, Denmark and the Netherlands. Dutch uh, is a name given to people who live in the Netherlands or Holland or Holanda in Spanish. This country has two names, by the way. Dutch is the word describing the people of the Netherlands as well as the language. If someone is born in the Netherlands, they are called Dutch and they speak Dutch. And now this is way off topic uh, for today. Let's get back on. Let's get on with today's episode. Let's carry on. Let's continue. Let me start off with a question first. Did you know there are 150 prepositions in English language? 150 prepositions. Wow, I know it's true. But uh, today's topic will only focus on two important prepositions, on and onto. We are going to cover only two prepositions in today's episode, alrighty? So this topic was brought to my attention by a couple of very special listeners who have recently shared their stories with me. I want to send a greeting to Jose Antonio from Zaragoza in Spain. Hola, Jose Antonio, ¿cómo estás? I hope the English Made Simple podcast is helping you with improving your listening skills. Keep listening, buddy. And also, Kiora to Jordi from Chile. ¿Cómo estás, Jordi? <laughs> Jordi has uh, just recently moved to New Zealand and he's struggling to understand Kiwi accent. Yep, been there. It was hard for us as well as a family, I remember, when we moved to New Zealand. But uh, then you just get used to it and it becomes... Like second nature, you just uh, it becomes something normal. So hang in there, bro. You will get there. So Jordi had an interesting question about prepositions. A couple of other listeners as well were also confused about when to use prepositions on and in, because in Spanish you mostly need to use one word, which is en. <laughs> First of all, let me just get weón inteligente to enlighten us before we proceed with the show. Weon, can you please tell us what is a preposition? Define preposition for us, please. According to Weon Inteligente, preposition is a word that connects a noun, pronoun, and um, any other phrase to some other part of the sentence. Remember these guys, prepositions in general are used to show direction, location, or time. They're very helpful when constructing sentences in English. It sounds simple, right? But strangely enough, there is no definite rule or a magic formula for choosing a preposition. My advice to you, amigos, is to pay a special attention. Pongan atención. O fíjense bien. When reading in English or listening to something in English, see if you can recognize some phrases that use prepositions. Pay special attention to those phrases, okay? For example, I'm going to see my friend Anna for coffee. So I send a message to Anna. Hi, Anna. I will see you in an hour. In an hour or in a few minutes indicate unspecified time during a day, month or year. This is a common phrase that uses preposition in. You can learn it and remember it. But you know what? I will explain more about the prepositions uh, in and into as well in my next episode. I don't want to go on and on about this particular preposition because today we are going to learn about one special preposition, about preposition on, O-N. Aha, that was a clever introduction to today's episode, Milena. To go on and on about something or just to go on about something... 
means to talk about something endlessly. To talk about someone or something without an end in sight, without being able to finish the discussion. To go on and on about something. <laughs> Usually uh, when a couples fight, uh, okay, let me give you a typical scenario. An example, imagine, imagine this, when a man and a woman who are in a romantic relationship have an argument. They are fighting, they are arguing non-stop. Women in general are known to talk a lot, okay? It's a fact. Women talk more than men. So when women fight, they just go on and on about a specific thing that they are not happy about in the relationship. You know, I'm just using this as an example. And uh, the guys, what do guys do? They just listen. Right, good. That's how it should be. Cool. Let's carry on now. When do we use preposition on? <laughs> Preposition on is a preposition of time, place, surface, and device. Device, that's a new word. In Spanish, this is equipo electrónico o dispositivo electrónico. Device is a generic word that describes a phone, TV, computer, and so on. Most of the time, we use the preposition on to describe when something is touching a surface or is being supported by the top surface. For example, the phone is on the table. The phone is touching the surface. It's touching the top of the table. Simple example, a very simple example. What I would suggest for you guys is to remember simple examples like this one. Whenever you feel stuck or whenever you are not sure of using the prepositions correctly, you can just remember these simple examples. They will help you. So, my phone is on the table. We cannot say that the phone is in the table. It would imply the phone is somewhere inside the table. It would just seem, you know, bizarre to use in in this case. Right, cool. Okie dokie, the next example when we should be using the preposition on is with time. We use the preposition on for days of the week or specific dates in the month. For example, I was born on the 21st of August, 1981. When were you born? When is your birthday? Justin Bieber was born on the 1st of March, 1994. He's still a baby. James Hetfield from Metallica was born on the 3rd of August, 1963. Hmm, interesting, he's a Leo too, just like me. So, we use on when we want to specify a certain date. En este caso, una fecha específica. It could be a birthday or an event. You know, that's what I mean. Cool bananas. Another example is uh, today's podcast will be released on Monday at 9 p.m. Australian time. We use on to specify a day of the week. If something happens on a weekday, for example, like on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. Wow. Ouch. I keep saying and so on. This is a phrase and it means etc. You see, you can now use this phrase um, from today. It will make you sound super duper fluent. You will notice that I use this phrase in almost all of my episodes and so on. <laughs> right, let's continue. The preposition on is also used to indicate a uh, device. As we said earlier in Spanish, this is equipo electrónico o dispositivo electrónico. Let me give you a simple example so that it is easier for you to remember. For example, guys, I am on the phone. You are on the phone. Dr. Jones is on the phone right now. Dr. Jones is talking with someone over the phone. He's on the phone. What's another device we like to be on a lot? Aha! Computer! Everyone is on the computer these days. I am on the computer updating my Facebook profile. Are you on Facebook? Another example we could use here is TV, television or telly for short. TV or telly is uh, more common to say them. What's on telly tonight? What's on TV tonight? ¿Qué hay en la tele? What's on telly tonight? My favorite telenovela, Gran Hotel, is on TV right now. 
My favorite uh, movie will be on TV on Monday night at 8 p.m. Con Air with Nicolas Cage. <laughs> no, it's not my favorite movie, but I did see it recently after so many years and I thought watching it in this day and age is just extremely hilarious. Con Air, check it out if you're a fan of Nicolas Cage. But anyway, lastly, we use preposition on to express that something is touching parts of our bodies. For example, I wear a ring on my finger. Uso un anillo en mi dedo. I wear a ring on my finger. We use the verb wear in this case to indicate you are wearing accessories like bracelets, pulseras or brazaletes or a watch, un reloj, and you can also wear clothes, usar o vestir cualquier tipo de ropa. We use the verb wear. In this case, we use the verb wear, to wear. Another example, when people greet each other in Chile, normally they kiss once on the cheek. Mejilla is cheek. We spell it as C-H-E-E-K. That's a new word for you, amigos. Awesome. You're doing great. If you're listening to this part of the show now, it means you've done really well. If you need to listen to this episode again to help you remember everything about preposition on, please, by all means, listen to it again. And now we are moving on to the next part of the show. Preposition, onto, it's to do with direction and movement. Let me give you an example. The cat jumped onto the chair. The cat jumped onto the chair. Whereas if you say the cat laid on the chair all day, it has a completely different meaning. If you say the cat was on the chair all day, it does have a completely different meaning. The cat jumped onto the chair. When I use the word onto, I always imagine some kind of a movement. As you know, the preposition to is a preposition of movement. When combined with on, it becomes onto. Another example. I step down from the bus and onto the road. I stepped down from the bus and onto the road. I exited the bus and went onto the road. Cool. So here we are, amigos. I hope that after today you will have more clarity of when to use prepositions on and onto. I shared some simple examples with you so that it would be easier for you to remember and associate these two prepositions. Was it useful to you? Let me know. Jump onto the Facebook and comment in the Facebook group, English Made Simple. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please share it with your friends. The more, the merrier. Next week, we are going to talk about prepositions in, into, and maybe at. Let's see how we go. Who knows? In the coming short and sweet episode, we will cover some common phrases and uh, linking phrases that use prepositions on and off. On to stick around, it will be useful and practical. You've been jamming with Milena V from English Made Simple. It's time for me to sit back and um, have a glass of red wine. You've been an awesome audience as always. Catch you next time. Hasta la próxima.